Hi, it's Emily Lee, Part of Art from the Heart. This is the second video in my die versatility series for paper smooches. In this video, I will focus on the cupcake dies and paint palette dies. I'm going to use them in combination on two very different cards. The first idea is based on a card I made back in the fall for a neighbor's daughter who turned two. First, let's have a closer look at the dies. The cupcake dies come with a base and topper, which could be used as a cupcake, ice cream, frozen yogurt, or gelato. It really depends on the color and texture of your choice. There are embellishments, which include a cherry leaf and sprinkle. Included with the paint palette die, there's the traditional paint palette and layered paintbrush with a full brush color and partial brush dipped in paint. This tiny paint bit could also be a whimsical heart. For my first card, I'm starting with a craft base and I've trimmed two mats from Crate Paper's DIY Shop 6x6 paper pad. Next, I'm going to die cut the cupcake base. I thought these sun rays would nicely mimic the folds in a cupcake liner. Then I die cut the top of the cupcake from an airy watercolor pattern. Here's how all the papers look together. Next, I'm going to use the paintbrush die to create a couple of striped candles. Then I use the full brush die to create flames from champagne glimmer paper. These candles will be super sparkly. For the age, I'm using the numbers dies and I'm going to try to pick up some of the printed numbers from this pattern paper within each of the die cuts. First, I have to clip apart the numbers I'm going to be using. As I've mentioned in a previous video, it's important to snip the attaches as close to the edge of the die as possible to avoid cuts and also impressions if you're using your dies to dry emboss. If you're using the negative of your die cut, you will also see the impression those little pieces leave on the edge of your cardstock. The printed 5 fits nicely inside the 5 because it has a nice solid space, but I want to pick up more color in the 8, so I move it around and decide I like it with the red 3. Now that I have all the pieces die cut for this card, I can do a mock assembly to see how it looks together. At first I think I would like to see the numbers as candles, but then I changed my mind to the original design. For the sentiment, I'm going to use the Happy Birthday Sentiment from Birthday Sampler. I'm not stamping the sentiment directly on the cupcake or the card. I want the two lines separated, but since they're so close together, I need to create a mask. First, I stamp the sentiment on masking paper. Then I cut out the sentiment and make sure to create a jagged line to make it obvious when lining up the two halves later on. As shown in a previous video, this is the same method I use to stamp single sentiments in different colors. Now I take the pattern paper that I want to stamp and trim the sentiments from. I want to stamp birthday first so I line up the two masks and remove the birthday section so that the bottom part of the sentiment is stamped directly onto the pattern paper. When that is done, I remove the top part of the mask and trim out the sentiment. Had I not done this and simply stamped the sentiment twice, you would see the tails of the P's and Y hanging down into the birthday label. Likewise, you'd see the TH and the D in the happy label. I'll do the same in reverse for the happy part of the sentiment. Place both parts of the mask down and remove the happy part of the mask so it stamps directly onto the pattern paper. After the stamping is done, I'm going to do some more rearranging with the sentiment in place. On my original card, I thought the candles didn't look realistic sitting behind the cupcake, so I decided to use the leaf die to create divots, just like the ones candles would make in icing. This involves partial die cutting, using just one of the curved edges. This means that the cutting plates won't be stacked together but offset so they stop cutting where the two plates don't meet. Now you can see the little opening where the candles will slide into. You can cut as many of these you want for each candle but I think it looks best if you have two or three candles. Here I decided that the cupcake needed a bit of shading so I'm sponging the edges with frayed burlap distressing to give it more dimension and also so it doesn't blend into the background paper. Now I'm going to adhere the flames onto the candles with my zig glue pen and adhere the mats onto the card base. To hold the candles in place, I'm going to tape them down with a piece of score tape once I decide on the perfect angle. Here I'm adding foam tape to the back of the cupcake to see the visual effect of it on the card, but I'm not adhering it just yet. I do a little more arranging of the sentiment and numbers. When I'm satisfied, I add foam tape to the base and adhere the entire cupcake to the card base. Once more, I think about using the numbers as candles, but I go back to my original design. I take glue dots and adhere the sentiment labels, then the numbers. The aid is quite narrow, so I have to use my zig glue pen. The sentiment looks a bit high, so I move it down just a little.
For my second card, I'm taking the cupcake die and turning it upside down to use as a head. I'm die cutting it from Basil Buttermints. If anyone knows of a more fleshy colored cardstock, I'm all ears. Next, I'm going to make two hair pieces by die cutting the cupcake again twice in brown. You can, of course, use the hair color of your choice. To create the hair, take the die cut piece and flip it upside down. Insert it back into the die so that the outer two pieces catch the edge of the die and sit as snugly against it as possible. Then run it back through your die cut machine. You end up with a bunch of hair, or a long cloud since you could totally use it that way. Now, if you layer the pieces together, you can start to imagine a person. I just want to point out the two little imperfections that you'll end up with. These are easy to snip off and I'll do that later. I place the hair slightly above to show a bit of the ears. Then I take the paintbrush die and cut that twice to create pigtails. I'm going to use the sunny side up stamp set to create the face. There are a couple of different options for eyes and a mouth. After stamping the face, I'm going to use a sponge dauber and some pink distressing to create rosy cheeks. When that's done, I can adhere the layers of hair to the head. I snip off those two little imperfections and adhere the top layer of hair with foam tape. Next, I'm going to tie some natural ribbon around the brush handles to act as hair bows. I adhere micro glue dots to the front and back of the handle so the trim doesn't move. After adhering the pigtails to the face, my sweet little girl is complete. Now all I have to do is attach her to a card. I'm starting with some pattern paper from Crate Paper's Love Notes 6x6 paper pad. The pink on our cheeks goes nicely with the zigzags on the pattern paper. I'm going to choose a sentiment from the Group Hug stamp set and stamp it on one of the Word Bubbles dies. I have to choose a bubble that points toward her. I'd like to layer the speech bubbles to maximize pattern paper usage, so I'm going to use one of the speech bubble dies too. Now my sentiment has to fit inside that top word bubble. I decide that one of the longer ones fits the style of the card better, so I'm going to mask off the two halves and stamp it stacked instead of on a single line. I use washi tape to cover up the part that I don't want stamped. Then I do the reverse to stamp the top line. When that's all done, I can adhere the pieces of the card together. I want a bit of sparkle, so I'm going to give the girl diamond earrings. The last thing I need to do is adhere this to a card base. And that's my finished card. I hope this video has inspired you to look at your dies in different ways. If you create a project based on this video, I'd love to see it. Link up your creation in the comments here on YouTube or on my blog. Please refer to the supply links below if you're interested in any of the products I used in this video. You can also visit my blog for stills and more information. Thanks so much for watching.